So, uh, the numbers looking ever and ever stronger in Mrs May's favour. Let's talk over the political implications of tonight's vote with Guido Fawkes, news editor Hugh Bennett and Hilary Wainwright, founding editor of Red Pepper magazine. Hello to you both. Thank you for Hi. bearing with us as far as the cold is concerned. How chilly do you think it's going to be in the 1922 committee? I think it's going to be very tense and probably pretty chilly and I don't think they're going to come out much warmer. I don't know, I think if PMQ is anything to go by, actually, you know, we're thinking this could have been, you know, this was really the make or break session for her, but there weren't really any really rebellious interventions from Tory MPs. Everyone who spoke was quite supportive, and I think it may well be the same in the 1922 committee. There'll be lots of desk banging, there'll be lots of loyal colleagues standing up to give speeches, but what they, as we know, what they say in public and what they actually do in the secrecy of the... Uh, the voting booth or whatever they have to put their votes in is very different because obviously it's a secret ballot so the numbers may not be as favourable to the government as... Bit of a sideshow though the... isn't it really in the great scheme of things? Well I think it's important because it is the government and I think that whatever happens tonight in terms of confidence she's lost control. I mean she's lost control of what's happening and I think... Isn't it the if... contrary though isn't it that she's underlining her control and she if she wants to can stay in power for another year they cannot challenge her for another year if she wins tonight well the the, the conservative party maybe formally can't challenge yes. him but parliament can i mean yes. there can be con that's my point yes yeah. but there can be continued votes of confidence which you know tory mps might join uh, actually in terms of you know the possibility of a general election i know that is more difficult now but it's still possible because she's she has lost people's loyalty and even if she wins 170 supporters, that leaves her quite a lame animal. She, she passes the, 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 the line, but not in great sort of, with great strength. Yeah, and, and I think that's sorry. backed up also by the fact that her deal isn't popular either in Parliament or in the country. So in that sense, she is beginning to look like a, a lame duck. Prime Minister. That's the point, isn't it? It is a sideshow. She is likely to win. It is taking up a precious parliamentary time. And actually, when it comes to it, we should be talking about the agreement that she's brought back from Brussels that it would appear she can't get through the hat. Well, that's the thing. Even if she survives, there's clearly still nowhere near a majority for actually getting her deal through. And particularly, I think the DUP could be a big problem for them because they may well oppose her, not just on the deal, but they may start opposing her on other government business as well. She'll be left short of majority because they are so opposed to the Northern Ireland backstop. And this could lead to the sort of nightmare scenario where even though May's, uh, May Spinners have been putting out the line that she's not going to fight the next election or probably not going to fight the next election to sort of try and reassure Tory MPs, but we don't know when the next election is going to be. And if she does actually lose the support of the House, now, she is still vulnerable to vote no confidence or the DUP just not supporting anything. There could be a snap election as early as next month, in which case she might well be leading it in. And a lot of Tory MPs, I think, will probably not be very comfortable with the, with the idea of Theresa May leading them into another election, well, even if it's yeah. as soon as January. But one wonders what a snap election, where that would leave us. You know, once the dust settles, we'd still be in the same place as far as Europe is concerned, wouldn't we, unless we start the clock ticking again? Well, I think if we had a snap election, I think it's pretty likely that Labour would win that snap election, given the chaos of the Tories and the complete sort of lack of adequate leadership by Theresa May. Then, you know, it would be up to Labour. Say, of course. Well, the polls are indicating increasing support for Labour and declining support for May. And I think that, you know, if Labour were to give a stronger lead, I think that Jeremy Corbyn has been brilliant in calling the Tories to account and criticising the deal and actually forcing May to, to come before Parliament, but also exposing her inability to justify the deal. But I think he's not been positive enough in terms of an alternative solution. But there are strong forces in the Labour Party that are arguing not only for a second referendum, but also for a different kind of Europe, a Europe which would uh, meet the concerns of those that voted for Brexit, as would a lot of Labour's national manifesto promises. So I think that in terms of what's going to happen with the snap election, we'll get a Labour government and we'll get a Labour leadership that's, that's actually putting forward a strong alternative. I'm, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not sure Labour have really put forward anything of substance on Brexit apart from going around the issues. Interestingly, it was a Sky data poll, I think, yesterday, which showed that the public think that uh, politics would actually somehow be more chaotic under, under Labour than it is currently under the Conservatives. So 
whether whether there's going to be a big swing towards Labour, I don't know. But I think certainly with with May there, with with her deal there, you know, all the same problems remain. I mean, interestingly, you had a launch. Um, I think some Brexiteers put forward an alternative proposal. David Davis and uh, crucially Arlene Foster actually launched this alternative backstop protocol, which actually removes a lot of the issues that they have with the current um, the current backstop protocol. I think that's the sort of thing that May is going to have to start. She's going to have to start if she survives, listening to other ideas. You know, I think there's been a tendency. I think for her and her closest advisors to sort of put their fingers in their ears, not really listen to any other suggestions, try and rubbish anything alternative that's been put forwards. And you know, something is going to have to change because her deal it remains as bad as ever, it remains as unpopular as ever. And whatever happens tonight, you know, she is still you know, probably looking at least 100 votes short of getting her deal through. And that, that's the fundamental I think, thing. I think you have to bring Europe this. into this. I mean, May, you know, likes to rely on, you know, photo calls with... Angela Merkel and so on, but actually it, Europe have made it very clear they're not going to change the deal and I don't think they'll change it for David Davis's ideas or anybody else. I think the only thing that would get rid of the backstop is actually a full customs union and that's not really Brexit. I mean that's no way bringing back control. It's actually being involved in all the rules without any say over them. So I think that, you know, that they are stuck. You'll be saying the Norway model next. <laughs> yeah, no, I, obviously I don't think, don't think that is the solution. Um, but uh, no, I think f fundamentally, I think MPs need to look at, you know, where, where we are and how, how we're going to get forwards uh, in the situation. I think there, there is a danger that, you know, they don't. Can you see a way forward, or can you see um, our European counterparts looking across the channel at us, saying? Well, how can we do a deal with the United Kingdom when they can't even agree between themselves? Well, I think it's absolutely, it's no surprise at all that the EU is refusing to move at this stage. I mean, they've got no incentive to offer more concessions at the moment. You know, May is still, I think a lot of people feel like she's more interested in not upsetting the EU than actually standing up and negotiating a good deal for the country. And as long as she takes that attitude, I think if she'd actually put her deal to the vote yesterday and had it defeated, she could have actually gone to the EU in a stronger position. She could say, look, I have tried to put this deal through. It has been defeated hugely. Like, no deal will have challenges for the UK, but it's not going to be plain sailing for the EU either. You don't want a no deal outcome. You know, we've got to go back to the negotiating table and do something. And I think by putting it off and just trying to get weasel words from the from the EU to get out of it. I think she hasn't done anything anything towards solving the problem. All the problems are still there. Okay, sadly we're out of time. Good to talk to both of you. Thank you very much indeed. Let you get back into the warm. Thank you.